the sum and the product of two tensors is also a tensor, and we can show this directly from the definition. We also have the so-called so quotient rule, although we cannot divide tensors, of course. This last rule allows us, for example, to see that stresses and strains are related via a tensor. In this video, we will prove the sum, product, and quotient rule, and we also see its uh, implication on the stress-strain relationship. So let us take a look. So first, the uh, addition rule will be that if you take two tensors, S i j k and T i j k, then the sum is also a tensor, and uh, we will show it for this rank three tensor. You can do it for any rank; it goes the same way. And the multiplication rule, if you have some tensors, like this vector, rank 1 tensor, and this rank 2 tensor, then you can form other tensors, like AI, AJ, will be a rank 2 tensor, SIJ, or you can compute TIJ, AJ, so your left is one index, so you will get a rank 1 tensor, or something like this, TIJ, TJK, there, all, all those products are all tensors. We'll show that product rule as well. And the quotient rule, how does that work? Well, if you have AI and TIJ tensors, uh, then you uh, can compute uh, uh, AI equals TIJ times BJ, and then this BJ is in fact also a tensor. So it's called the quotient rule, of course, because you would like to divide by the TIJ. So you get something like AI divided by TIJ equals BJ in new tensor. Of course, you cannot divide. You you can do something like that, so we have to be a bit careful there. Now, a consequence of this quotient rule is that if we have uh, TIJ, our stress tensor, and EKL, our straight tensor, related by some rank 4 tensor CIJKL, uh, if we have these relations between stresses and strains, then we know, due to this quotient rule, that this CIJKL is also a tensor. So that's how we are going to use this quotient rule. Now, let's show why these rules hold. Uh, first, the addition. So, uh, TIJK is a tensor and SIJK is a tensor. So, if you go to prime basis, then TIJK prime, you have three Qs, QMI, Q and J, QRK times R, old uh, tensor. And the same for SIJK prime, you have these three Qs times R, all tensor. Then we can compute the sum, TIJK prime plus SIJK prime. Uh, here we just plug in this expression, and here we just plug in that expression. And then you see you can factor out all those Qs. They are just numbers, so you can take them in front. And your left is TMNR plus SMNR. So you define as the sum of your tensor uh, WMNR equals component-wise TMNR plus SMNR, and then you get TIJK uh, 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 prime plus SIJK prime equals QMI, QNJ, QRK, WMNR. So if you then define uh, WIJK prime as a component-wise, of course, again, you have the WIJK prime equals QMI, QNJ, QRK, WMNR, and that's exactly what you is required for a tensor, so your W transforms in the correct way, hence it is a tensor, and that proves the uh, addition rule. Multiplication rule is proven in a similar way. Let's do uh, this one. So we have BI equals TIJ AJ, and uh, we define our BI prime in a similar way as TIJ prime times AJ prime. Furthermore, we know the TIJ and the uh, AJ, those are tensors, so we know how they transform. Then we have to show that the B transforms in the same way, in order to have a rank 1 tensor, or a vector. So we know TIJ prime equals second order, so two Qs, QMI, Q and J, TMN. And we know AJ prime equals QRJ, AR. Then we can compute BI prime, uh, because we have the equation over here, just put all the Qs uh, there. So for the Tij prime is here, and the Aj prime is over here. And then take all the Qs in front. Those QMI and so on, they are just uh, numbers. 
So we have QMI, QNJ, QRJ. Ah, these two are nice. They have a repeated index, QNJ, QRJ. But they are orthogonal. So that means that QNJ times QRJ, symptom of the J, gives a delta and R. Um, uh, and then we can do the summation over the N. So we get a, we are left with a QMI, TMR, AR. Now we know we can uh, write PM equals TMR AR using the what BI was with uh, just renaming I to M and J to R. So we need know BM equals TMR AR. So that means that our BI prime equals this uh, QMI TMR AR, which we had over here, and TMR AR was BM. So uh, BI prime equals QMI BM. So uh, B i prime transforms in the correct way, so the B i prime is a tensor, and you can do all those other products in exactly the same way. So if you take a product of some tensors, you get a new tensor, uh, uh, and the number of free indices you are left with is the rank of your new tensor. Over to rule number three, the quotient rule. Uh, that's a bit more tricky. Uh, uh, We'll, uh, we'll use, of course, the same ideas. So we have an AI equals TIJ BJ and EI prime equals TIJ prime BJ prime. We know that the uh, AI transforms as a uh, rank one tensor. We know that the TIJ uh, transforms as a rank two tensor. And then we have to show that this BI on the right hand side transforms as a rank one tensor or as a vector. So we know this. EI yeah, prime equals QMI AM, and we know TIJ prime equals QMI QNJ TMN. Now we can plug that in in our equation for AI prime here, and for TIJ prime here. So we are left with a QMI times AM and some Qs, a TIJ and a BJ prime. Then the trick is uh, to get rid of the QMI on the left hand side, and we do so by multiplying with QRI on the left and right hand side. Because by doing so we get a QRI and a QMI, those together, again we have an uh, orthogonal tensor Q, uh, Q, so that yields delta MR, and an AM is left, this one is uh, left, and we have the same on the right hand side, we also have our delta MR, and the, the, these three terms are left over here. And uh, then you see that uh, we are left with uh, this term uh, becomes a Q and J, a TRN and a BJ prime, by performing the sum over the uh, M, and uh, the left hand side just gives you, of course, the AR. Uh, and the AR, again, using this over here, is equal to TRN BN. Now we're almost there. We take the TRN BN to the uh, left hand side, so we get uh, Q and J TRN BJ prime minus TRN BN equals zero. And then we have this TRN, they both have it, so you can take it out. Uh, uh, it's just a number, so you're left with TRN times something equals zero. Now, this e uh, equation has to hold for all tensors T, so it, this only holds if what is between the brackets is equal to zero, so Bn minus Q and J Bj prime equals zero, or uh, uh, if you uh, furthermore uh, multiply by Q and K to solve for Bk, you get Bk prime equals Q and K times Bn. In other words, your B transforms exactly as it has to transform, so your B is a rank one tensor or a vector, and you can prove a quotient rule like this for uh, larger tensors in the same way. You use exactly the same trick. You just have a lot more Q, uh, M, uh, Mi's, and so on in the equation 